Okay, I have to say this is, I don't know how many attempts, I don't want to say how many attempts I've tried, but it's really hard to stay in the 10 minutes. Okay, so I'm starting my timer. Here we go. Grappling, presented by me, Serena Gamble. So here's your author's uh, husband and wife team, Theodore and Nancy Sizer. And this is the chapter uh, art chapter article taken from the book the students are watching schools of the moral contract um, and here you see that Theodore um, you know he was very renowned educator and leader in the professional field and his book course is compromise was the foundation in setting the coalition of essential schools which on a side note is that they no longer have the Coalition of Essential Schools in the United States. And he was influenced by one of my favorites, John Dewey. Um, I love, really love that um, he believed that teachers are learning coaches and he believed in student-driven curriculum and co-constructive instruction. instruction. Frustration, can we see ourselves in Carl? So this article, the first lines um, really sum up and they set the tone of this article in such a profound way. School is a frustration for Carl. He just can't see the good it does him. Even more, he can't see the good he does it. And again, uh, just reiterating, um, it's about that um, studenting, right? And teaching students how to student because we teach them how to think, how to read, and how to write, and most importantly, how we teach them to know their role. Um, there's a, The example that's given in here is that Carl, um, you know, is on his way to computer class, and they're met with a sub, and the substitute teacher um, is having, you know, technical issues, and, um, you know, is struggling through the lesson but Carl has the know-how and some computer experience and he offers to read the, the manual and to be able to help and kind of take lead in the class so they can just go forward in a lesson but the substitute teacher very very res resistant to that and um, you know and then it just leads to you know a power dynamic between Carl and the substitute teacher so again um, evidence of teaching students how to student and this was really important that came up for me as far as self-reflection and I want you to hold on to this self-reflection question throughout and then to re-examine it again at the end how can you reset your teacher default settings grappling as a student um, Carl was treated as if he was an empty vessel and that his skills and opinions were of no value to those around him. And, you know, um, may, we, maybe we've seen examples of this in the classroom. Maybe we're guilty ourselves of doing it, you know, like, again, it goes to that default setting, right? Um, it's all about uh, studenting versus learning, which results in the intellectual and moral vacuum. And I really love this quote, and I pulled it up because I thought it was important to be able to discuss or to even, you know, to think about. Schools exist for children, but children are often seen as a school's clients, as its powerless people. They are told that they are in school not because of what they know, but because of what they don't know. So again, it's like how schools are in that mode of deficit thinking, right? Because it's all about how education is set up, how the educational system is set up. All based on that is that about what students don't know. And we need to shift that, you know, we need to shift something about that. So my question in this, because Carl, in that situation where he just wanted to help and, you know, that it, that he had that, some of that experience and that know-how, you know, it, did it, um, discourage him from wanting to help out? So my question that came up was, have we damaged 
global morality by enforcing the act of schooling students. Because we often have that when we go back again. We teach students how, how to think, what to think, what to read, how to read, what to write, you know, and how to write. And all they must always remember is to know their role. So how have we done that as far as uh, damaging glob global morality by enforcing the act of schooling students? So we talk again, you can see the hidden curriculum um, come up in there, you know, um, you know, a lot of things about the act of schooling students. Civil behavior, here's some of this, the habits of civil behavior. And my question that came up for myself was, is teaching civil behavior enough? Is teaching, teaching these habits, is that enough? I don't know. Do as I say, not what I do. Um, key points that came up for me as I read through this. We teach students to be civil and to be better global citizens but the world behaves otherwise. And especially right now with everything that's happening, you know, that there's evidence everywhere that, you know, we teach students how to be better global citizens, how to be civil, but the world behaves otherwise. Uh, um, a good quote that I pulled up was about how we teach uh, treat as adolescents as delicate flowers and able to act and think and it's patronizing and it's wasteful rather we should be um, creating opportunities for students to be able to absorb complex situations through meaningful learning experiences and most importantly listening to people tell their stories excuse me sorry about that <laughs> Children and teenagers are not exempt from grappling with moral and ethical dilemmas. They're not. You know, um, they face it. They face it online. They face it on the playground. They, they face it in, in the malls and wherever they hang out. They face moral and ethical dilemmas all the time. They're not exempt. So why shouldn't we equip them with the skills and how to be able to to um, work work through moral and ethical dilemmas. So my question that came up is, how can students fully develop, develop moral ethics in a deeply colonized and constructed world? Redefining school, it's something that we just need to do. It's just, yeah. Anyways, so the habits of civil behavior, they need to extend further than just the school environment. How do we instill those values that where, where uh, students will carry that in their daily lives everywhere they go? I love this. I think this should be a mission statement for every school is that the test of a good school is how students behave when no one is looking. And I think that's so important when we're talking about integrity, moral integrity is doing the right thing, even when no one is watching. Very important. Um, how to harness the energy of teenagers by uh, insisting that they tackle important issues and controversy and biases. So we can help them to be able to, to move through that, to maneuver um, through those those such things. Um, question that came up for me, should learning moral ethics hold higher priority than academic subjects? Something very important that just came up. Solid points, some really solid points that I had to share about this article that was brought up in this article. A question that came up for me is how can we revolutionize education when we as teachers need to be reconditioned to being comfortable with being uncomfortable? And I've said that again be before, is that 
we really need to learn how to be comfortable with the discomfort and having those difficult conversations, tackling those sensitive and controversial topics in the classroom, and sometimes being a little uncensored in the classroom as well. And there goes my timer, and I'm going to talk really fast now. So, um, yeah, so here we see underlined, this underlined, it's much easier to give a lecture on the three causes of French Revolution than to question the nature of revolution itself. So I thought that was a really profound statement as well. And again here, talking about the sweeping nature of high school curricula, that it's this, a little bit of this and that, and the overload of trying to just compact all of these different subject areas and make it compact and where it's not very meaningful and that oftentimes you know um, the material that stays in the student's head only until the test will never make it into his or her outlook again which is important going back to that question should learning moral ethics hold higher priority than academic subjects Oh, another important key point I wanted to bring up was that during our undergrad, um, you know, when we're learning how to become teachers, they encourage us to teach with conviction and passion. And then once we get into the classroom, once we get into the schools, yeah, have that conviction, have that passion, but just do it within the comfort zone. Again, going back to that, we need to change that. We need to redefine that. Because grappling with tough issues, it really is hard work. Um, you know, there are more, more schools, more teachers that are doing things differently. And I like that this quote here is that um, more schools are more school people. They recognize that for humans, the moral is embedded in the intellectual. That thinking hard, grappling in an informed and careful way is most is the most likely route to a principled and constructive life. And I just think that really is uh, we're seeing. You know, we're seeing those those changes that are happening in some schools and in some classrooms. You know, so something really positive. A good person has both passion and restraint, respect for evidence, and patience when evidence is not readily at the hand. You know, um, we could break that down and relate it to how consumerism, social media, and, um, you know, the impatience that we have as, as a society, you know, um, there's so many ways we could break this down, that quote down. Yeah, but I thought that was a really good definition of a good person. So, in conclusion, teachers must be good role models of grappling. And it's true. We really do need to be good teachers of, uh, we need to be teachers of, of um, good role models of grappling. To be real and authentic and, um, you know, to share, maybe even share those dilemmas that we have, you know, and um, having those kinds of conversations with their students and maybe being a little bit more uncensored in the classroom and having un uncensored conversations with our older students. And then, you know, even at times, you know, where we could do that with our younger students as well and talking about those really sensitive and controversial topics in the classroom that we often censor and shelter children from because again like I said the world is not censored the world is not filtered you know um, the world is filled with you know immorality and unethical people and children teenagers they're not exempt from that so we need to, again, look at how we define education, how we define schools. So, truly moral education is an intellectual undertaking that must infuse the entire school, and it must be led by adults who know things, 
who themselves are regular grapplers with all the work and the messiness and confusion that rich content entails. So again, going back to that default setting, you know, um, that's something that I'm hoping at this point in time when things, when we are in midst of grappling, all of us, we're in midst of grappling with, um, you know, the uncertainty of very unusual circumstances that we are in right now, especially with the COVID-19, you know, global crisis, is that I really hope that we are able to have those conversations about redefining education and also resetting our default settings as teachers, but not o only teachers, but as people as well. And, you know, re-examining, you know, what are our moral ethics? How am I, you know, role modeling responsibility of myself, of others, and demonstrating that in ways that, you know, is for the betterment of everybody. You know, so just some things to think about, um, you know, and hopefully that with what I had um, discussed in the key points and some of those questions that came up for myself in reading this article is that you will go through and maybe, you know, um, you'll have your own questions as well. Maybe, you know, like it's something that you want to explore further for yourself. You know, so with that, I know I'm over 10 minutes, Tim. I apologize. You know, but um, this is a very important article and it brings up a lot of uh, really important um, topics right now, especially in this, in our current time right now of grappling, grappling with, you know, our place in the world. You know, so with that, I wish for everybody to be safe. I really do. You know, I pray for your families. Um, I pray for your safety. I pray for your health. You know, and um, I just, uh, I wish you all the best. And hopefully someday that we'll meet again someday soon. So with that, I just want to say thank you for listening.